Honorable Chancellor, I have the honor of inviting the guest speaker to deliver the ceremonial graduation speech by reading out his citation, and it is of Dr. W. M. W. Virakorn. Dr. Virakorn, former Director General of Agriculture Sri Lanka, has completed 35 years of research and research administrative career on agronomy and crop physiology of over 23 years following his PhD. He has received his basic degree in agriculture from the University of Peradeniya, Sri Lanka, and PhD from Oregon State University, USA. During his career, he has contributed to enhance the productivity of many agricultural crops by way of conducting experiments and the generation of new knowledge and dissemination of the same to end users and policymakers. Dr. Virakorn has worked in many national and international projects as the principal agronomist, physiologist, or as research fellow. Dr. Virakorn was the national coordinator of the National Rice Testing Program from 1998 until 2011. He's a recipient of 2000 Start Young Service Scientist Award for the South Asian region, Best Agriculture Scientist of the Year as the award 2009, and has received his excellence as the President of Sri Lanka's Research Awards 10 times since 1999. In 2017, he also received Global Award for Agriculture from the RDA Republic of Korea for his commitment and contribution to global agricultural technology cooperation. Dr. Vera Kohn, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, Venerable Vice Chancellor of the University of Colombo, Sasana Kiti, Sri Buddha Sasana Sobhana, the Chief Sangha, Chief Sanganayak of Western Province, Most Venerable Muruthi Tuyananda Thera, Ausarai Swami Nuansa, Professor Chandika Vijayaratna, Vice Chancellor of the University of Colombo, Deans of the Faculties and Faculty Members, Members of the uh, non-academic staff, distinguished invitees, my dear graduates of the degrees of Bachelor of Science, Performance Arts, and Mass Media, and ladies and gentlemen. At the very outset, let me thank the Vice Chancellor and the Organizing Committee for this Convocation Ceremony for inviting me to deliver this Convocation Address of this, this prestigious event. I consider this as a privilege and an honor to deliver this convocation address in the presence of this incredible faculties and student bodies, especially the graduates of very special degree disciplines which are very much important for the future of Sri Lanka, the science, performance arts, and mass media. Ladies and gentlemen, when I visited, when I was invited to deliver this convocation address, I was given the liberty to choose a theme with a broader context where all of us will have an importance and relevance out of it. Of course, at depend, different scales, depending on our academic and professional backgrounds and interests. My topic selected today is moving towards the future. Is about, is not about hardcore science, but to present some simple facts about the past and the future of the talented group to the talented group of boys and girls seated in front of me, who will become an integral part of these creators of this future. Three to four years ago, you must have walked into the great institution, the Colombo University of Sri Lanka, targeting of becoming a graduate in various fields of study. Your expectations were very high. You may or may not have achieved the level that you wanted, but you are graduating today. Your life with the parents and loved ones at home, their control and guidance ended on the day when you entered the faculty. You brought more flexibility to, to your life, decision-making and being with newly found friends and teachers. This, is, this was a life changer. After three, three or four years, you must have learned a lot 
of a load of life lessons made you more mature in terms of thinking, scientific inquiry, be it natural or social sciences, full of activities, and now about to graduate, leaving your fond memories behind to enter the society to meet the next, next set of challenges as a graduate of the Columbia University. Same as you, I too experienced the same back in 1979-83 at the Faculty of Agriculture of the University of Peradeniya. It was the same experience that we all have. University life is university life, unparalleled to me in many ways, with minds full of radical ideas. You graduates are much smarter, actually smarter intellectuals than us to support the future developments in this country. I sincerely hope that at least part of you will be contribute to this worthy cause in the future. When I was preparing this speech, I realized the day I graduated back in 1983. Most of you are not born. The thing that I'm going to say may sound a little controversial in the very today's context, but as a whole, Sri Lanka as a whole is a better place than it was. May not be in all aspects in the current happening. The duty of in, fr in front of us to further improve and make Sri Lanka a much better place for Sri Lankans to live. We all know since independence, there was a paradigm shift in agriculture in this world, as well as in then Ceylon and now in Sri Lanka. Since 1948, the population increased by almost three and a half fold. Along with that, the demand for food increased. The increase in mouth to feed the feed and change in economic structure with progressive developments of the country. Historically, we were told that we were self-sufficient and food-secured nation. Obviously, there were little, very little trade between countries in that era. However, at the time of independence, we were importing 60% of our rice needs to feed just 6 million population in this country. After independence, we invested heavily on agriculture and later with the support of the world scientific community, today we are satisfied with the achievements made. Thanks to the concerted effort made by the scientific community and the investment on technology generation and dissemination as a united activity with one focus, that is self-sufficiency. We were able to produce much larger quantities of food through increased productivity while achieving the food security in a considerable extent. The past we have followed was not rosy, and the future will not be so. But the world will be moving along and in an evolutionary pathway. We should never ever forget this phenomenon. The world is changing. The change should not be for the sake of change, but with a vision and with a cause. I request you to be part of it and make the change happen for a cause of a better future. Ladies and gentlemen, with the change in both local and global agricultural policies, fragmentation of agriculture policy implementation processes, and the changes in biotic and abiotic stresses, especially with the climate change alone, Along with the attitudes of scientific agriculture, the food independence of this country is again being questioned. Today, we are living in an era where your service is sorted most. A day will come for you to leave this, lead this society. Unlike in the past, today, have, today we have all the comfort that we need. We are living in a society where information is at your fingertip. All of you have a highly sophisticated data retrieval system in your pocket, which we didn't have at that time. You must know how to extract the reliable and correct information that is available in this cyberspace for better cause. As a professional in mass media and arts, you have the duty to boil down the vast array of information in the presence and the present the correct information for the betterment of this society. The need for sharing information is mostly felt now. No individual can solve 
all the problems by him or herself. We need to have a partnership. We need to share our knowledge, discuss in scientific way, no matter what they are. We need to think differently than what we, were, what we did in the past. You need to develop partnerships with all to march towards your destiny. Your generation is in a better position to meet these challenges if you, if you choose the right path. As a rule of thumb, be confident on your past. Always stand by for the real scientific truth, not just by popular beliefs. We know that the country is facing a food crisis because of the wrong advice and trying to Im implement non-scientific principles. These are good lessons for us to learn in planning for the future. As a youngster, with the spirit of graduation, we tend to think that we are the best. Yes, of course, you are the cream and the best in this country. You must have that wisdom and the proudness in your mind, but always be humble. You must keep trying in getting into the correct path. Always remember that many more things are there in front of you to learn. Never stop learning, listen to others, especially those who criticize you the most. A new era of different kind of learning process has just now begun. Let me quote an American entrepreneur who found that the Apple, the Steve Jobs, he said, he said once in 2005 in a convocation, he was a college dropout, not a graduate from any university. He was fired from his own company that he developed with others, that is Macintosh, but later succeeded in making Apple a household brand. He once said, sometimes life hits you in the head with a brick, but don't lose faith. I'm confident, confident that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You have got to find what you love." Unquote. The lesson to be learned here is to, passionate, is to be passionate on what you do, but not to make it a passion. You have to go through the life with more than just passion, the change, for passion for change. You need to have a strategy. I repeat that, I want you to have a passion, not the fashion, but more importantly, you have to have the strategy. Not just awareness, but action. As I said before, the future food systems in Sri Lanka will have a very different to the present. Concerns for healthy life will change the consumer demand for healthy, safe, and nutritious food. This phenomenon is universal. We think more on ecosystem sustainability and the services while providing safe food to the consumer with increased input use efficiencies. The subsistence farming systems which we enjoyed over centuries are becoming converted to commercial farming systems to meet these local and global needs. The climate is changing, exposing our crop production systems into a greater difficulty than ever before we must have actions to meet these challenges. We need to convert these problems into opportunities. We need to think differently. Innovation is the key to the success of every challenge. Every field has its own innovation. In agriculture too, it is a scientific innovation that is acquired. You don't need to re reinvent the wheel, understand the good lessons learned from the past and innovate new ideas for scientific development. We as a nation, always satisfied with primary production and seldom settled without adding value to our own products. Innovation not, not in our culture. You as a science graduate know that we are exporting ilmenite, but not the most expensive, expensive products, that is titanium dioxide or titanium. We are exporting graphite, but not the graphene, which fetches roughly about $300 more than the world market. We sell quartz in bulk, but we never think of silicon chips. There are many. Forget about the exports. Even our farmer 
sells their product, even washing, a simple thing which adds value to his product. This culture has to be changed. We could be the nation exporting finished products and not primary products, and we think differently. Behind dear graduates, we need to dream with your knowledge. Dream for something which may not be possible today, but in years to come, you will definitely realize it. We don't need, to, we don't need a magic to transform this country to an innovation-driven society. I know all of you are sitting there thinking about the future. When I am going to, where I am going to work after graduation, wondering at what company, at what government organization offering you the job. I was also in the same boat a long time ago. The degree certificate that you, are, that you receive today is the permit for you to live the rest of your life. It will help you to drive through the life and take the society to a height that it deserves, but not to take the society on a ride. It is a certificate that shows the willingness you have to contribute more to the social and economic development of this country. This convocation is the culmination of the academic life you have spent in the university as a student. This ends an important chapter of your life and the open and open doors for a new beginning. The future awaits you. The society seeks your contribution and assistance. You are an important person. Your social interactions will be the key to your success. Finally, some advice, the small, simple advice. Be trustworthy. Maintain your caliber. Maintain your credibility. Be open-minded. Be, be bold and be true. Never undermine the capacity of your colleagues. Never forget your roots, your parents, brothers, sisters, schools, the university, and your teachers. Never doubt about you. Take care of each other. Be a good citizen in this country. My dear graduates, it is you and the other graduates coming from all the universities of Sri Lanka should take the leadership to take this country to the next generation. As you proceed to the next chapter of your life from today, I am sure we all will be very much pleased if you could deliver your expertise for the betterment of this country and to make all her dreams come true. My dear graduates, congratulations. You have worked hard. You deserve to be, to be the proud to be proud of these achievements. I wish you all a great success for future endeavors. Together, let's move forward to the future. Good luck, good health to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Veera Kuhn. And may I request the Venerable Chancellor to give this token of appreciation to Dr. Veera Kuhn. Thank you.